I use a tiling window manager on Linux, and I pretty much always have. Whether it's i3, BSPWM, Awesome WM, or Sway over on the Wayland side, and I probably always will going into the future. And while there are certainly some tiling-like experiences on Windows and Mac OS, certainly much better than the offering used to be, the first time that most people experience a tiler is when they start using Linux. And it seems like everybody using a tiler is constantly shilling them, I being one of those people. But upon trying them, some people realize they may not be what they're cracked up to be. And that leads to posts like this. Tiling window managers, what am I missing? I know tiling window managers have been discussed ad nauseum, but I hope this is different. I'm not here to offer opinions one way or another, but rather to ask if I'm missing some key point or functionality. I'm not going to read the entire post, but we'll go through some of the key takeaways. People seem to rave about tiling window managers for their increased productivity, ease of use, and efficient use of screen real estate. I've tried i3 briefly, and I could not see where that efficiency comes from. My main personal use in Windows had been web browsers, email, and occasionally Word, along with some recreational coding. My work use is similarly emails, web browsers, Word, but also text editors, and some very heavy use of Excel. So these use cases often involve me switching between a web browser, Excel, and a text editor very frequently. The key issue being that the size I want the window is extremely dynamic. Sometimes I want Excel being full screen, other times I want the web browser full screen, other times I want the text editor to be in a very small space just to copy some text across. Another example, sometimes I'll need to flick off a couple of quick emails, and in that case I don't want the email full screen. Other times I might sit down for a solid hour or two of customer service when I want the email open full screen. My home use is fairly similar, but to a lesser extent, but still to an extent where there is no fixed rule that says, if I'm using this app, then make it this specific size. Now this post is a couple of weeks old, but I still thought it'd be nice to go and offer this guy my advice, and maybe anybody else out there who might be new to a Tyler, or maybe thinking of trying one out. So we need to address a couple of things. Firstly, i3, I think, is a great choice for your first tiling window manager. It offers a lot of power. It offers a lot of customization that is fairly well documented. There's a lot of third-party tooling, and it's fairly well pre-configured. I don't like the slightly offset Vim keys, but that can be really easily addressed. Most of the other stuff is really good. And if you want to go and try out Wayland, it gives you a direct path to do so. Sway is a one-to-one -one drop in replacement for i3. Nothing new to learn, no new customization, no new configuration. It's exactly the same. And it gets you into the mindset of using a tiling window manager. But, and this is the very big but, it is a manual tiler, and they are horribly inefficient. So the idea of a manual tiler is when you make a new window, just like any tiling window manager, it is going to be placed inside of a tile. Unlike a floating window, a tiled window is going to appear as basically the exact same size every time. If my desktop is empty, this is how the window is always going to look. But when you make your second window, this is where you start seeing inefficiencies. You have to decide the direction it is going to tile towards. Is it going to tile above, below, left, or right? Now, this offers a lot of really powerful use cases. You can make really crazy custom layouts where you have like this semi-grid and then things around the side of it. That is really cool, but also you have to go and manage that. You have to decide every time the direction you want to go to actually get to that point. That's kind of inefficient. But I am not using a manual tiler. I am using a dynamic tiler. A dynamic tiler, you spawn windows in the exact same way, but the way they are placed is based on an internal layout. So right now I'm using the master stack layout. So I have the master node on the left, and then the stack on the right. And this is how they are always going to be placed. But if I don't like this, I could always go and swap to a different layout. For example, I could use the master stack with the master on the right, master on the top, master on the bottom, or I could use the golden ratio layout. Now the layouts that are available depends on which window manager you're using. 
Right now, I'm using Awesome WM, but there are other things like DWM, X Monad, and plenty of other things like that. I'll leave a list of examples in the description down below. But there's also another option called a hybrid tiler. There aren't many options out there, but the most notable is BSPWM. BSPWM has this internal layout, but you also have the ability to manually move stuff around as well. So you get sort of a mix of both worlds. I would love to recommend a dynamic tiler for people's first tiling window manager. The problem though, is none of them are as easy to configure as i3 is. And that's why i3 keeps getting recommended. Now I do use Sway over on Wayland, but what I would recommend for a more tolerable experience is downloading one of the auto tiling scripts. This is the one that I personally use. It works pretty well. It basically takes i3 or Sway and then kind of turns it into a hybrid tiler. Things will get automatically placed into a layout, but you can still go and manually control stuff if you want to. I just generally don't use the manual control. So one thing it does bring up quite often is control. Wanting to have a certain app being a certain size. And this is really important. I'll get into this in just a moment. But I think it's also important to consider the way that most Windows users use their desktop is something like this. You just have all of these floating windows all over the place, all on the exact same space, and it's hard to work out what exactly is going on. Having things being, you know, a little bit more structured might be a little bit of an improvement. It may not be for every single use case, but I think this is a lot easier to deal with. But when it comes to control, it's not like having a tiling window manager takes away your ability to control the window sizes. Let's say, for example, I have this window here and it has BTOP open, and I want this to be a lot more of the screen. Well, in i3, in Awesome WM, in BSPWM, in Sway, in pretty much every window manager, whether it's manual, hybrid, or dynamic, you have the ability to control the window size. In Awesome WM, if I hold down the super key and then use my right click, I can do so with my mouse, and it works like you'd expect it to. But also jumping back and forth between full screen was mentioned. This is also quite simple on pretty much every tiler. Let's say I want my browser to be full screen. Well, I can press super F, now it's full screen. If I want BTOP to be full screen, super F, now it's full screen. This over here, full screen, not full screen. This should be bound by default in i3. I think a good idea when you first start using a tiler is one, read all of the default hotkeys, and two, just go onto YouTube and look at how other people are using that environment. Another thing I want to address is, am I just so indoctrinated into using a floating window manager from using Windows? Now, the way that a lot of people use a tiling window manager can seem incredibly intimidating, because it seems like a lot of people are terrified of their mouse. And there are two ideas that I wish would really go away when it comes to tilers. Firstly, when you're using a tiling window manager, you don't have to shy away from your mouse. You've probably noticed throughout this video, I've been doing a lot of things by using my mouse, whether it's resizing windows, whether it's focusing on a different window, whether it's something like, you know, moving windows between where they are on the screen, all of these things I commonly do with my mouse. I do have hotkeys to do them as well, but I don't necessarily always use them. In a lot of cases, using my mouse is actually more convenient. And it's the same way I use something like Vim. Sure, I could do everything on my keyboard with the various shortcuts, but sometimes I just like to scroll through Vim. And sometimes I like to click a line in Vim. Also, totally fine. You're allowed to do that. You're not participating in a cult. You're just using a computer. Use it the way you feel more comfortable. Along with that, there's nothing wrong with using a floating window. For example, my notes for this video right now, they're a floating window, and that's fine. Usually when I open up my notes for anything, that's also a floating window. A lot of the time I'll make like a terminal window a floating window because it's just easier to deal with. It's okay to use a floating window in a tiling window manager. The functionality is there. 
And in cases where you always want it to be floating or you always want it to be a set size, things like i3, for example, have this system known as window rules, which will apply a bunch of different properties to a window and it'll be set up in that exact way every single time you open it. I don't think this guy's use case is truly uncommon. I think the problem that he's having is he's dumped himself into this tiling environment and doesn't know how to take the workflow he was doing before and then adapt it to fit into this tiling workflow. Plus he went to the manual tiler, which is the least productive and least efficient way of actually using a tiling system. But the last thing he says is a bonus question. Does the answer to the above differ depending on whether it is a laptop or a desktop? A laptop seems to be the ambiguous case since having no mouse is a big plus for a tiling manager, but the having one small screen is a big negative. I already addressed the mouse issue, we're not living in 1960, if you want to use a mouse, go and use a mouse. That's as simple as that. But when it comes to the desktop or the laptop use case, for me, nothing really changes. I use a tiler just as I would on a desktop and a laptop. Obviously, the desktop gives me a lot more space to spread out. I use a triple monitor setup. I have my main horizontal monitor. I have a vertical monitor. And I have a another vertical monitor used for my video notes so I can, like, partially look at the camera. I used a tiler on a laptop for two or so years. It worked fine. That's pretty much all I have to say about that. But I'm not here to sell you on a tiling window manager. In the end, maybe a tiler just isn't for you. In which case, that's totally fine. Maybe you want to try out the floating on something like GNOME. Maybe you want to try it out on something like KDE. Or maybe you want to go and try out something like OpenBox and still get the window manager experience, but have it be floating instead. All of these options are available and much, much more. So let me know your thoughts down below. Are you using a tiling window manager? Have you tried them out before? Or are you just sort of first getting into them now and trying to find out if it's something for you? I would love to know. If you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech over tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.